Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036359, 0703 768119. Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. This morning, we are going to take a quick study into the word of God. We've been, our theme has been, let there be light. But we want to read a scripture very quickly and from there we shall build our discussion and we'll be praying together. I want you to turn to 2 Corinthians 2 Corinthians 2 Corinthians chapter 4 we'll read it from verse 1 we'll read it up to verse 7 but in terms of our focus of study for this morning, we are going to be looking at verse 3, verse 4, verse 5, up to verse 6. Therefore, since we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. May God bless his word to our hearts as we study together this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. There are few words that are very important that I want you to catch this morning. It's possible that when we come back in the night, God may take those words further for us. But this morning, I want you to take words like, from that verse 3, from verse 3, say, but if our gospel be hid, the word hid, if our gospel be hidden, Now, I want you to note that you use the word hidden. hidden. 
not in terms of hearing. Eh? If we don't want somebody to hear, what is the right word we will have used? If you don't want somebody to hear. Now, what we are saying this morning is that you don't use the word hide when what you don't want to happen is to hear. If it is not to hear, the word is not hide. When do you use the word hide? Eh? When you don't want somebody to see. Whereas, many, many times we think the gospel is to be heard. And sometimes you think that the greatest problem about the gospel is the hearing. So because we want people to hear, we have invested so much in what? In what? Loudspeakers. It's almost like whether they like it or not, they must hear. And I hope you know that you can hear without seeing. Am I right? But in our passage this morning, it appears as if the essence of the gospel is more than hearing. So I want you to know the word if our gospel be hid, which means that even the brothers, people like Paul and the apostles, that were preaching the gospel, their preoccupation about the gospel is not the speaking, is not the hearing. What is their preoccupation about the gospel? Eh? Is for it to be seen. I would like you to note that word now. Because even in verse 2, when he was talking, he said, but we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Why is it the hidden things of dishonesty? Why is he hidden? Where is he hidden? Oh, this class. You are not with me this morning. Why do you hide something? Eh? So that it could not be seen. The reason for hiding is simply that you don't want it to be what? To be seen. So, a brother was saying, he said, but by manifestation of the truth. Excuse me, what's the meaning of manifestation? Eh? The showing. Now, I thought it should have said, but by the declaration of the truth, or by the preaching of the truth, or by the shouting of the truth, or by the proclamation of the truth. Is that what he said? What did he say? By the manifestation of the truth. To manifest the truth. That means to do what? To show it. To make it seen. To make it apparent. That anybody can do what? Can see it. So I found that these preachers, they were not first preoccupied 
with the issue of speaking. They were first and foremost bothered about manifestation. So I was looking at how he said, but by manifestation of the truth, by the showing forth of the truth, by the exhibition of the truth, we commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Did you understand what Brother Paul has just said in that verse? Did you understand what he has said in that Bible verse? Did you understand what he said in that Bible verse? As if he's saying, the issue that we are preoccupied about is not just to speak the truth. It's not just to shout it. But to do what? To do what? To show it. To manifest it. To open it. And how do we open it? By manifesting the truth. Commending ourselves. So it looks as if there's something about these men, these women, that we need to understand as regards what is the centrality of the gospel? The centrality of the gospel, which we are going to study quickly, quickly, quickly this morning. The peculiar, the, what is central to them was that the gospel is not just to be heard, but to be what? To be seen. Let me be sure that you have got that terminology before we go on. Have you got that terminology? What did I say is the centrality of the gospel that they were preoccupied with? What were they preoccupied with? That the truth will not just be heard. The truth will be what? Will be seen. Will be manifested. That the gospel is not first about preaching. It's about what? It's about what? It's about showing. You are getting me now. Showing. Let it be seen. Let it be made manifest. Let it become so clear that the people can see it themselves. Are we together to that point? So, for me to be sure that you have followed to that point, one question, and if you know it, just raise your hand and say, yes, I know what, what it is. The question is this. What is going to Deliver people that are in darkness. Yes, sir. Light. When we were reading Matthew chapter 4, it said, the people that sat in darkness, they have had a great message. Eh? Does he any deliver a man who is in darkness? Let's talk. Let's talk. Does hearing a powerful message deliver a man who is in darkness? Let's talk to me. What does a man who is in darkness, what does he need in order to come out of darkness? He needs to see. He needs to see. I was surprised that when the Lord Jesus Christ was going to fulfill the prophecy that our brother was talking about. The Bible said, and he left Nazareth and departed unto the Galilee of the Gentiles, that it may be fulfilled. That which Isaiah said, that the people that, that sat in darkness, a great light sprung up, and they saw a great light. So we are here, 
Brother Paul was saying, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Is there any version that you are carrying? And it did not, it says, if our gospel is silent, is there any version that says that, please? Any version? Oh my God. The class is generally quiet. They, they are not following. Are you hearing me today? Are you hearing me at the back? Eh? Now, is there any version that anybody carries? And verse 3 said, if our gospel is silent. Eh? Why did they not use the word silent? They are not talking about hearing. They are not talking about shouting. What are they talking about? Seeing. So you will be seeing what now? Now, let's go to the next place. He said, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom? The God of this world has blocked the ears. Please talk to me. He did what? Has blinded the minds, the minds of them which believe not, so that the sound of the gospel will not reach their ears. Let's talk, let's talk, let's talk. He blocked their ears so that the sound will not get to them. No. It's not about hearing. It's not about sound. It's not about shouting. There is so much shouting. But shouting is not an answer to darkness. Shouting with a loud sound. Is not a weapon of deliverance for the man who is sitting where? In darkness. What is the deliverance for a man who is in darkness? The light that shines. Now, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest, what? The light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should do what? Oh, so what's the problem we are dealing with in that verse today? What's the problem, please? Eh, sister, stand up. I think you are saying something and I need to hear it. Blindness and the shining of light. Is that what we are dealing with in that Bible verse? Eh? So, what does the devil fear? What does the devil fear? Eh? So, what is he preventing? He does not want light to shine. Tell somebody this morning by yourself. Say, the devil is not afraid of your noise. Neither does he fear your sound. There's only one thing that he's struggling with. Your light. So if the gospel 
if the gospel, the glorious gospel of Christ, if it's going to be effective, what should it be doing? What should it be doing? It should be shining rather than shouting. Oh my gosh. Am I creating confusion for some of you this morning? I say if the glorious gospel is going to be effective in dealing with those that are in darkness, those that are in bondage, what should it be doing rather than shouting? Do we want God to solve that problem in our generation? Eh? Are you looking forward that in your lifetime the issue of darkness that has filled our land will be handled effectively? Eh? How? Eh? <laughs> Amen. while I'm still defining my terms. Can you see in verse 5 and 6? We preach not ourselves, but Jesus Christ the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light, to do what? To shine out of darkness. What is that God doing now? Turn your Bible, turn your Bible. Read from verse 6. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, what is that God doing now? Eh? As shined in our hearts. Lord, please give us understanding this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. If you are not following to the point where I am, don't be ashamed to wave your hand and say, I am not understanding. Because there's no way we can go on unless this basis is properly established. And if it's established, then I know we can build this meeting as the Lord will guide us. Do you understand to where we have reached? Not yet. Uh, all right. All right. I will go over it again. I started by saying, Brother Paul said, but by the manifestation of the truth, we commend ourselves to every man's conscience. And I said, when you use the word manifestation, what is he talking about? He's talking about showing. Was talking about... Now, can I ask you, is it possible... To show something where there is no light. Eh? Is it possible to say, okay, come and see and there is no light? Is it not possible? Eh? It's not possible. So we notice that even these preachers, they know that truth, as wonderful as it is in terms of proclamation, in terms of declaration, in terms of preaching, in terms of propagation, truth is not effective until it becomes what? A manifestation. Brother, do you follow to that point? Eh? I can preach, I can shout, I can propagate. I can be on the radio. 
I can shout on the television. As wonderful as all of those things are, honestly speaking, without undermining all those good activities, it is deficient. If it does not become what? So these brothers, they say what we are preoccupied about doing is not about shouting. It's about manifesting, making it to be seen and to be known. Then he said, if our gospel is hid, and I said, when they use the word hid, what does that immediately imply? That the gospel is not to be just heard. It must be what? It must be seen. It must be seen. And as if, if the devil is going to resist the gospel, he is not likely to resist the hearing. Wow. Am I communicating with you? He may not resist the hearing. He may not fight the shouting of the gospel. Because he knows that that does not really affect anything for him. But if he sees that the gospel is no more shouting, but that the gospel is beginning to do what? To shine. Then what is his last card? What will he like to do now? What we like to do now? He would like to blind people so that they cannot see. Now, Brother Paul now said, that God who commanded light to shine out of darkness what is he doing now? What has he done? What has he done? We are now in verse 6. Oh my God. Now listen. You will be offending me if you are not reading your Bible. Can you turn to your Bible right now? If you are not reading your Bible, you are not doing well. Have you opened your Bible? Can you go to verse 6? Are we in verse 6? Right. While you are reading your Bible, can I go on? God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, he has shouted. Eh? He has spoken. He has preached. What did the Bible say he has done? He has shined. Where? In our hearts. For us to do what? Uh -uh. Be reading your Bible. Don't talk from your head to me again in this class. Is that all right? Anytime you talk from your head and not from the word of God, somebody will give you a knock on your head. Turn back to your Bible right now. Are you in your Bible? For God, who has commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shouted, has spoken, has proclaimed, has preached. What has he done? Shined where? In our hearts. So that what will happen? That we may give the gospel 
By shouting. What did he say we should do? That we may give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So can I ask you right now? What does God want you to give? Eh? That's what God wants you to give. Please listen. Even if I don't go beyond here now, that's okay. But that will give me a basis for where we are going later on today. That the centrality of the purpose of God right from Genesis chapter 1 is not about shouting. Because the problem of darkness is not noise. It is not sound that deals with darkness. What deals with darkness, please? So when darkness was covering the whole place and was engulfing the whole place, did God come out and say, you darkness, I will fight you. I will fight you. I will fight you. Is that what he did? Did he bind darkness? Say you darkness, I bind you, I bind you, I bind you, and I tie you down in the name of Jesus. Is that what he did? What did he do? Let there be light. The Bible said, the light shineth. The light shouted. Oh. The light shouted. What did the light do? The light shineth. And the darkness does not, cannot comprehend it. And even as you are sitting here, all that bothers God, all that he is particular about, is that it will shine in our own heart to give the light. So I'm noting one very critical matter now. That if God has done something in my life, what is he expecting me to do? Eh? To shine the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Did you understand to this point? Eh? If you have, wave your hand and let me see. Okay. Okay. Praise the Lord. Do you think I can go on a little? Can I go on a little? All right. When the Lord Jesus Christ was being introduced in John chapter 1, all of you, please go to John chapter 1. Now, would you like to read from verse one, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was what? And the life was what? was the light of man. If I stop there, that may give you a little problem. But I want us to go a little further before I come back there. Verse 4 again. In him was life. And the life 
was the light of men. And the light does what? Shines in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness. To bear witness. Of what? Eh? Oh, glory to God. So what are they calling Jesus in that verse now? The light. That all men might through him might believe. He was not that light but was sent to be a witness of that light. That was the true light which lights every man that cometh into the world. Praise the Lord. So, right in John chapter 1, what were they calling Jesus in that passage? Eh? That in him was life. And the life was light. So can I put it to you quickly before we go on? I just wish you are understanding. If you carry life at all, if you should have the kind of life that we are talking about, what will that life be? Eh? So what will be shining? All right. So does it mean that the light we are talking about this morning is not is not fluorescent light? Eh? Excuse me. You mean it's not fluorescent light? It's not uh, moonlight? You mean it's not sunlight? It's not starlight? What is it? It's a light. That is life. Eh? Oh Lord Jesus, please help us this morning to understand where we are going. So, in the mind of God, what was God looking for? Eh? A light that we can carry like a lantern? Excuse me, talk to me. What kind of light? A light that is life. So what are we to talking about now? So we need human beings. Eh? As they are walking up and down, they are carrying a life. Eh? But this life, what is it? That is doing what? That is shining. So what it means is that if there is a darkness anywhere, instead of God standing up and said, don't worry. Instead of God standing and say, Yes! All of you that are sitting in that place, you are confused, you need to repent. Is that what God was going to do? What is he going to do? He would take somebody like this. Inside of whom there is a life that is what? That is light. So what will he do now? Eh? Will he need to say, go and preach? What will he need to do? He just send him there. And as he sends him there, what happens to darkness in that place? What will be driving darkness out of that place now? The life that is light here. So when we talk about gospel, we are talking of gospel that shines. We are talking of gospel that doesn't shout. Are we together? So this man now, what will he become? It will be the gospel, Abby. Because in him was life. And the life is what? It's light. Are we together to that point? Eh? 
So brother Paul said, look. By the manifestation When you want light to show, what do you do? You manifest it. You remove the cover. He said, by the removing of the cover, by the unveiling of the truth, we commend the Bible. Eh? What did you say we commend? Eh? Commending ourselves. Did you see what we are doing here? What am I doing here now? Showing and turning it over, removing every veil, and say, Look at it. And as the light. That is life. Not that the one that is shouting and making noise. But the life that is life. As it is being manifested. Do you know where it is going? It is not just shining on people's face. Where is it going? It's penetrating into their conscience. It's beginning to dispel darkness. That is where. Can I tell you? Darkness is not in people's face. Where is darkness? Inside. Inside. Now we need a gospel. Located in a man like this. And God said, look at it. And as the light is shining out of this man's life, it's going straight to where fluorescent light cannot go. You know fluorescent light? Has he ever entered your heart? Sister, has he ever entered your heart? No way. What of floodlight? Has floodlight ever there with darkness in anybody's heart? Why not? They have no capacity. Floodlight is powerful, but no capacity to do what? To penetrate, to enter, to reveal what is in a man's heart. But now, there's a life here. That is light. That is shining. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a God. Who commanded light to shine out of darkness in the beginning. And shine where, 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 where. In our heart. To do what? To give the light. Of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. But where is he going to penetrate now? Right into the conscience of people. Where floodlight cannot go. Where moonlight cannot enter. When this life that is light begins to shine. Oh, people's conscience will soon be opened. You see, they say, no, 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 close the light, close the light, you are disturbing us here. Say, what have I done? You are making somebody restless. You are confusing things here. Ah, they say, what has he done? Say, we don't want him here. You know why they don't want him here? Their conscience is experiencing a light. Darkness is no more comfortable. And so they are restless. And so whenever they see you coming, what happens immediately? They will pick race, pick race. They say, brother, don't go now, don't go now, come now. They say, no, no, no. Actually, the reason why I'm running is because of you. Say, ah, what have I done? What have I done to you? Eh? I've not done anything. They say, no, 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 you don't know what you are doing to me. You are making my life uncomfortable. That's the kind of people that we're looking for in this land. Not those who shout. Not those who proclaim 
and propaganda on the radio, on the television. Excuse me. Not those who carry fat, fat Bibles. And when they are passing, they do like this. But they are not shiny. What are they doing, please? They are shouting. Shouting up and down. Putting the Bible on their chest. And going up and down. And darkness that is located where? In people's consciences. It's not disturbed. They say, yes. It's okay. You can keep moving up and down. Because you are not a problem to us. But there is that young man there. That one is a problem to us. We don't like him here. That is what God is looking for. In him was life. And the life was what? Was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness. And the darkness cannot comprehend it. Now, you know, when we say, let there be light. Some of you may think that we're just talking about one thing that would just come down from heaven. Shut up! God is talking beyond that this morning. God is looking for something beyond that. The Holy Spirit is asking for something to be done. And it is that that is the preoccupation of the word of God. Can I take you through a little excursion from the word of God this morning before I ask you to pray? I just intend that this morning will set a basis. If the basis is clear, if the gospel is properly defined, then you will see. So all I'm doing now, we're just searching the Bible so that we can get familiar with the concept. Can we get familiar with the concept? And if we do, then we can pray. Then I'm sure that heaven will help us when we come back later in the night in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you know that in John chapter 5, the Lord Jesus Christ was describing John the Baptist. John the Baptist. And I was surprised when Jesus was going to describe John the Baptist. Can somebody quickly stand up and read for me verse 33, 34, 35 with a good voice. You sent to John Uh huh. That you might be saved. Did you hear Jesus? What did he call John? A bunny and a shiny light. Go ahead. So did you understand that the concept we are building was the preoccupation, even in the mind of Jesus Christ? Eh? That he, he even said John. He didn't say John was a mighty preacher. What did they call him? A bunny and a shiny light. Whom is he talking about? He's talking about a man. So there's a human being now that the Lord is referring to as what? A bunny and a shiny light. I'm surprised. They didn't say Reverend Dr. John. Eh? They didn't say Apostle John. What did they call him? A shiny and a, a bunny and a shiny light. I don't know why they are calling you your big name. I 
I don't know what is wrong that darkness never called you light. They rather gave you one big name. Because it appears as if what you carry is irrelevant to them. Now, go with me. We are just tracing the Bible now. When you go to chapter 8, John chapter 8, are you John 8? Who will help me read verse 12? Verse 12. Yes, this man. When Jesus spoke again. When Jesus. To the people. He spoke again to he, them. He said. Uh -huh. I am the light of the world. Huh? I am the light of the world. Excuse me. What is Jesus calling himself here now? I am the light. Did he say I am in the light? Uh -uh. Whoever follows me, whoever follows me, will never walk in darkness. Shall not walk in darkness. But he will have the light of life. But he will have the light of life. Wow, sister, do you understand that? Eh? What did he say? Uh -huh. And those who follow him. They will walk in the light and they themselves, what they will become, they will have the light that is life. Let me ask a question. Who are you? Are you sure? You are sure? I would like to be sure because the only evidence is not that you call yourself so. What will be the evidence when we say this one is light? Eh? There is a manifestation. Number two, darkness. They cannot stay near him. It cannot be somewhere and darkness will be rubbing shoulder. It can be somewhere and activities of darkness they are going on as if there is no problem. If there is light what happens to darkness immediately? Eh? They must disappear. So the question I should be asking you if you say you are the light is to check what circumference of ground has been illuminated such that when darkness sees you coming what do they do? They pick race. They say she's coming. She's coming. She's coming. She's coming. She's coming. And people talk to darkness. Say, darkness, why are you not in that place? Do you know what darkness says? Do you know what darkness says? Don't you know she's around there? Don't you see that girl? That girl doesn't allow us to do what? They say, what is she doing to you? Is she fighting you? Is she shouting on you? Is she making noise to you? They say, no. It's not a question of uh, noise. In fact, if she was just a noise maker like all these other preachers, we would not have worried. We were attending even church. And can you imagine, honestly, that you are a pastor in the church? And the choir that is singing. Look at me standing here now. Look at this choir. Eh? How will I be a correct light? Burning and shining. And right in my choir. Fornicators are there. They are so comfortable. Whenever I'm not feeling high in the spirit. They are the ones that sing me up. 
You are not hearing me at all. And they are singing me up. And when they present their song, they, you know everything is looking nice. But there's darkness there. What does that say about me? About the life I carry? You are not talking, oh. Eh? It meant that I'm either carrying darkness, myself, shouting, speaking, shaking my head, but no light coming out of that life. How will you be life that is light and right under your nose? But I'm saying under your nose. I'm afraid whether that darkness is only around, not inside. That's where the problem we're dealing with here. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not. And I said, Lord, Lord, I wish that is my testimony. That I also can say. I don't know whether you understand what Jesus said. Do you understand what Jesus said? He said, I am the light of the world. He that follows me. If, look, look at this brother now. If I am as you see me, if I am light. And this man says, he is my disciple. What did the Bible say will happen to him? He will not walk in darkness. I see someone say, you are a disciple, you are a disciple, you are a disciple. But your disciple, where is your disciple walking? In darkness. What does that point to the disciple? Talk to me. How could you be yourself light? And those who are following you. They are busy quarreling. 